he's going to show us uh, how we make a drum from scratch here. This is the pile of uh, ash wood. This is the uh, hoop stock for making a kind of hoop. seconds, cut the length according to the circumference, and then later on we will put opposing tapers on it to make up the lap. This is already cut to the, the height of the drum we want. This is going to be a 16 by 18. This was wider, this is three eighths of an inch. This is gonna end up being a boron drum. A boron drum being a, an Irish drum with one head on it, and they play it with a double-headed stick. And it has a cap skin on it. What else we got here? And this is the, what, the rough ash log then this when it- is, uh, out of the log, it was kind of heavy, and it was had a few pieces of bark on it, and uh, we decided to keep it. We're going to sand it, uh, plain and sand it down, and maybe make a, a table or something out of it. It's too nice to cut up and chop up. That's good. Uh, I'll tell you what I want to do here. Oh, no, I, if you don't want me to film something, no, you, you tell uh, me, and I won't. What I'll do is, uh, we'll do a little, little deception. There aren't many people that aren't going to see this. I'm not going to turn this into a documentary or something and put it on TV. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Do you want to do the steam table first or yeah, in sequence? And then let me... Uh... It starts here. Okay, let me let me get you on camera going here and let me back this up and... Oh. Okay, we fill it up with water and uh, halfway full. Electric heater in here. And you let that run anywhere from a half hour to one hour it takes to get the water to boiling in there and then the steam comes out through this connection here into this container here that we put the cover on and that steams the uh, the hoop stock that we're going to make the counter hoops out of when we want to do the shell we put the shell in this one and just transfer the hose over to here and this runs 20 minutes to a half an hour. We take it out of that. Okay, you stick it in the machine there and then... Turn the machine, turn the machine on and then bends the hoop, uh, the shell. When the shell comes out, It looks like this. And this has a lap on it here, which is glued and clamped together until we get this one. From there, you install what you call a stay hoop, which tends to stiffen this shell and make it rigid. Uh-huh. After which you sand it down, stain it whatever color you want, put a tack design on it if you wish, drill your various vent holes and hardware holes, and assemble it. Then we'll take a picture of the drum upstairs. Old Saint Bernard Mola shell of 
era of about 1940, uh, he had a new method, he thought, <coughs> of strengthening the drum by putting uprights in it. And because of the opposing grains, it defeated its purpose and allowed the shell to crack because of the opposing grains. I've since taken out the uprights and clamped it up and uh, we're going to try to make it. This one is one of my father's shells, very light, very small. He made it for my uh, nephew who was going to allow me to recondition it. This is all we have is the shell now. I'm going to recondition it and we're going to put it in the company museum with the permission of my nephew and it will be on permanent loan. But it will always belong to my nephew. And that's what we're going to do with this. <clears throat> Here are the hoops after they're bent. You can see the They get glued. On a form. Now this has been glued. And ready for more work here. When it comes off of here, we then put it on a shaper here to uh, break the corners on it, inside and outside. Then we sand it, and then we bring it, we mark it to where we want the holes, and then we put it on this machine. Put it on this drill here, which is angled off to the angle. Which gives the, the hole the, the proper angle and bevel. And it's slightly cocked to allow the rope Come over the top. Yeah, let me get a picture of that uh, that hole in. The rope comes over the top. Rope's too fat. The rope comes up from the bottom hoop over the over the top here, through the hole. And you can see why the hole is slightly biased. Uh -huh. To allow, because this is coming up alongside, then it's coming off to the side. And you see the slight angle to it. It allows the rope coming up here. There's three portions to it. <coughs> Had to be ground and filed and polished and drilled and tapped and this takes the the hardware which we will show you on the drum upstairs but there's a lot of work to it and a lot of hand work as you can see it has lots of burrs from the mold and these are solid bronze that takes care of that hey, go ahead this is a little but when it's made up, it really isn't a toy. It's an honest-to-goodness, real-life drum. But the kids like to play with them. And it's, it's a cheap version of a, of a regular drum. It, it is, in a sense, a drum. It's not, it's not a toy, although it's considered a toy. The ear has to be blanked out for me. You have to buy a whole hide. <clears throat> then I have a, a die that's in, at the 
leather makers and they stamp these out to this shape. And then when we get them here, we put contact cement on the inside here so that when it's folded, it'll be rigid here so as not to get the ear dog-eared when you push on it. Makes it more solid. And it's wrapped, it's laced with the calf skin. We usually use old, old heads or you buy scraps of uh, calf skin and you soak them to, to make them pliable. Then you lace them through the holes here and you tie them. And you end up with an ear like so. They, they may be dyed, either black or brown or chestnut, whatever color you want. <clears throat> the finished product we will show you on the drum there. Okay, here's the, here's the finished drum, all assembled. <clears throat> and the purpose of the year we just showed you is to add tension to the drum. By pulling down on this V V-shaped ropes here, it tightens it. When it tightens it, when you tighten this, it shortens the rope which pulls the heads together. And we have ten of these on here. <coughs> this is the snare system. What you are looking at with the rough bronze. Looks yeah, slightly different now. It's been polished and uh, ground down and sanded and filed and a lot of elbow grease. And the system allows it allows the snares to be disconnected without losing its setting. And the purpose of that is to get the snares out of the way so that you can replace the head. When the head is on, you can put this back in here. Tighten it down. Puts tension on the snares again. And we're back in business. Now this, <clears throat> the way it's shaped, you notice it's on an angle. And the, the holes here are on an angle where the lacing is. That forms a shape like so. And <clears throat> the laws of physics, when you tighten here, the pressure, the pressure on this is right here and right there. This corner here is holding this in. This corner up here is pulling this in. And it's tight. Now the, the principle being that when you want to, it, it won't slip. When you want to loosen the ear, to loosen the drum, if you raise up on this corner here slightly, it relieves the tension here and we leave the tension here because that goes away and you just with your finger push it up. Well, just push, push down on it. But when it's down, it's tight. Okay, uh, we, have, we have the tack design on here. Uh, in the case of this drum, it's, it's only ornamental. It serves no function uh, physically except for being, uh, when they glued the laps together they use the tacks down along the seam to help to hold the glue together. They ran the tacks in and bent them over and it, it did have a function. And normally the, the joint would not be that wide, the lap would not be that wide, but in order to make it symmetrical, they added another one on to give it a design. And then they had either a circle or diamond shaped, or sunburst 
coming out, various designs. In this case, this is a very simple design with a circle on it which is similar to a revolutionary war tack design that we have seen. The difference is we got what I call the broken circle, which is one tack being missing, which formulates a C, which stands for classic. And that's the reason for this tack design. It serves no physical function whatsoever, other than when I see that, I, I recognize it, and it's my drum. And so it's more or less like a trademark.